Hi, I'm Chris from the Hypro Service Department and I'll be showing you how to work on a 9303C-HM1C hydraulically driven centrifugal pump. The tools required to work on this pump are a half inch wrench, a 9 16 wrench, a rubber hammer, two flat screwdrivers, a piece of metal pipe that's an inch ID by at least four inches long, a one inch PVC pipe, a 9 16 socket, a 5 8 socket, an inch and a sixteenth socket, quarter inch allen wrench, and some hydraulic oil. Let's get started. We'll start by removing the front housing with a 9 16 socket. This front housing, you have a stainless steel wear ring. If there's excessive wear on the inside surface of this ring, you may notice a loss in performance of the pump. Also, if the pump is not flushed out after use, the harsh chemicals can cause excessive corrosion inside of the pump. Here's an example of a front housing from a pump that had not been flushed out after use. You can see the evidence of extreme chemical wear and corrosion even in the uh, plug area. Another potential cause in a decrease in performance could be a worn or melted impeller. You'll want to look at this surface right here. If it's excessively worn or if the pump may have been run dry, this could be melted. If so, replace the impeller. We'll go ahead and remove it with a 5-8 socket. You can use one of your screwdrivers to support the impeller. Use the two flat screwdrivers to pry off the impeller. And examine the back side to make sure this is in good shape and it's not melted. If the pump had been run dry, the seal may be melted on this surface. Next we'll go ahead and remove the mechanical seal. You want to take this key out first. If you need to, you can take a, take a screwdriver and tap it out. Remove the friction ring. Take your two screwdrivers and pry out the mechanical seal. And examine this for any wear any surface damage from an abrasive substance and also if the seal is melted or cracked from being run dry. Here's an example of a seal that had been run dry. It is possible to remove the seat by prying it out with two screwdrivers but this will most likely damage the seal and you'd want to replace it. We're actually going to take the flange off first and take it out from the back side. So to do that, take your half inch wrench and remove these four bolts. You can pull the flange straight off of the motor. And now we'll remove the seal seat from this side. If you were going to try to reuse a seal, you'd want to put a rag down or something to something to help protect the seal from any damage or dirt. You want to make sure that you have a very clean work area. And the seal can be tapped out from the back side gently with a screwdriver. You 
can also look at this area in here for excessive corrosion. Now that we've disassembled the wet end of the pump, we can get into the disassembly of the hydraulic motor. The first thing that we'll do is remove the port adapters. Notice that on the back of the hydraulic motor it's marked press for pressure and tank. On the side of this adapter port is also stamped tank. It's very important to have these on in the right configuration so the hydraulic hoses don't get hooked up backwards. Use your inch and a sixteenth socket to remove these adapters. There's a check valve inside of the tank adapter. You should be able to hear that rattle. If, if you don't hear a rattle, you can take it apart by removing a snap ring inside and cleaning any contamination. If the hydraulic lines are hooked up backwards, it may cause damage to the hydraulic motor seal. Let's take a look inside. We'll start by removing the bypass screw. Refer to your instruction manual on how to properly set this according to your hydraulic system. We we'll use a 9 16 wrench to remove the nut and washer behind it. Use a flat screwdriver to remove the screw itself. And you'll notice behind the washer that there's a gasket which is included in the 3430-0178 repair kit. Now we'll use our quarter inch Allen to remove these four bolts. It may be necessary to use your two flat screwdrivers to pry the motor apart from the tabs on either side. At this point you can check for any damage to the bearing or this o-ring or g-rotor. Next we'll remove the g-rotor housing. You can take your rubber hammer and gently tap this out. And from here you can inspect the inner surface for any deep scratches, excessive wear from possibly contaminated hydraulic oil. Also there's a number on here that can be cross-referenced in the instruction manual to identify which hydraulic motor it is if the tag is missing from the pump. Also these pins are different size. There's a bigger one and a smaller one so this can't be installed in an incorrect orientation. Next we can take the G-rotor itself off if necessary, you can take a screwdriver and gently lift it out of there. Examine the G-rotor for any excessive wear or deep scratches. From here, we can remove the pin. And you want to examine this for any deep gouges in it from operation. Next, we'll remove the shaft assembly out of the motor housing. First, we'll remove the slinger ring. It may be necessary to get underneath it with a screwdriver. And just pull that straight off. This will help if this mechanical seal is leaking fluid. This will help throw the fluid away from this bearing. 